We are starting our section on matrices, so let's jump straight into it. Now the first question is, what is a matrix? So define what a matrix is. This seems like a very complex definition, but we'll get to it shortly. It's an ordered rectangular array of real numbers. So we are talking about a matrix over R. We'll talk about the other details shortly, but for our purpose, we are going to be looking at ordered rows and columns of real numbers. Now you get matrices with other entries, complex numbers or other data, but we are going to be focusing on matrix matrices over R. So a matrix with entries that are real numbers. So let's take a look at it. The order is important. We can't just throw all the numbers in there. It's not a bag of numbers. It's ordered rows and columns, everything in its right position. So let's just look at the notation we're using. We use a capital very often capital letters to give a name to the matrix and then the entries are the lowercase letters. So these digits at the bottom, 1, 1, 1, 2, all the way to 1n, they tell you something about their position. The first digit tells you which row you are in and the second digit which column. So A21 is the second row in the first column. So we're talking about rows and columns and our order is very important. It's always row by column. So the size of a matrix is the number of rows by the number of columns. So an M by N matrix has M rows and N columns. So we can see for our rows entries, we can't write them all, we don't know what M is, but it's got M rows and N columns. So the rows go from 1 to M and the columns go from 1, 2, 3, all the way to N. So this is different ways of writing this matrix. So I can either call it A, but I can also call it AIJ m by n. So this means that the entries, this speaks to the entries, this is just speaking to the name, a speaks to the name of the matrix. Sometimes we write a matrix, the size of the matrix at the base of it, you don't have to do it, but it does help us in certain areas and we'll see how that works. All right, so let's look at an actual matrix. So here I've got a matrix filled with real numbers, now, we're not going to make the numbers too big. It could be any real numbers. It could be rational, irrational numbers, anything. We're going to stick to nice numbers that are easy to use. But just remember, the entries of the matrix, they can be any real number. So if I label, name this matrix A, I can read, write it as A, I, J. So let's look at rows. This matrix has one, two, three rows by how many columns? One, two, three, four. Three rows, four columns. So it's a three by four matrix. And the entries are all real numbers. So A, I, J is a real number. And I know I can then be one, two, or three, and J is one, two, three, and four. So if I ask you, what is A, two, three? What I'm asking you, what is the entry in the second row, third column? So second row, third column is minus four. So that's how we label the entries and that's how we refer to it. So those are the matrices and the entries of matrices. Now remember, it's always row by column. The size is very important. The size is gonna play a very important role as we go forward. So always when we start, look at the size of the matrix. So the first property is the issue of equality. Now, the definition of equality is very obvious, but we have to define what it means for two matrices to be equal, because this is now a new thing we're defining. So I've got two matrices are equal, and there's two conditions. Firstly, they have to be the same size. That's the first thing you check for. Are they the same size? If they are not the same size, then you don't even look further. They have to be the same size. And then the entries in the corresponding positions have to be equal. So if I give you a two by two matrix, one, two, three, four, there's my two by two matrix. If I look at the matrix one, two, zero, three, four, zero. Now it's got a column of zeros. These two matrices are not equal. Even though it's a column of zeros, we sometimes think zero means nothing. It makes a difference because I've got a two by two matrix and a two by three matrix. So these matrices are not equal because they're not the same size. So we can't even look for corresponding entries. If I look at the matrix one, two, three, four, and the matrix one, two, three, four, like that. The same numbers are present. It's got the same size, but they're not the same in the same position. 
because in row one, column two is not the same as row one, column two of the two matrices. So you don't have to look further than that. Even though the sizes are the same, they do not have the same entries in the same position, so they cannot be equal. All right, now the next thing is the concept of a square matrix. A lot of our work will be on square matrices. A square matrix is a matrix with the same number of rows and columns. It doesn't have to be square, but that is, if I've got the same number of rows and columns, I have a square matrix. Right now, a diagonal matrix. This definition is sometimes a bit difficult to interpret. It's a square matrix. It has to be square to start off with. And Aij is equal to zero if I is not equal to J. So what does that mean? That means I'm not talking about A11, A12, A33, A44, all the way to AMM. That means the main diagonal. Now the diagonal goes from top left to bottom right, not the other way around. There's only one diagonal and that's that one. So a diagonal matrix is a square matrix where everything except, now we'll talk about the word except shortly. I'm told everything outside of that main diagonal is zero. So let's just take a small two by two. One, zero, zero, five. That's a diagonal matrix because where my row and column are not equal. So the position A12 is zero. A21 is zero. Now this definition doesn't say anything about what happens on the diagonal. It doesn't exclude the fact that they could be zero. So zero, 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 zero is also a diagonal matrix. It's a bit of a boring one but it's still a diagonal matrix because that one is zero and that one is zero. So A12 and A22, they're zero. So what's on the main diagonal doesn't concern us. It could be zero, doesn't have to be zero, but a diagonal matrix has zeros everywhere outside of the main diagonal. And on the main diagonal could be zero, couldn't be. So if I've got a three by three matrix, zero, naught, 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 five, zero, 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 one, that's a nice diagonal matrix because all these positions are zeros, and we don't mind what happens on the main, main, di main diagonal. It could be zero, it doesn't have to be zero. All right, now, a special diagonal matrix is the one where on the diagonal I have ones. One, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one. Zero, 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 one. That is called the identity matrix. Now, yet again, it's diagonal, so it has to be square. This is the identity matrix, and we name it I3. Why? Because it's the three by three Diagonal matrix matrix with ones on the main diagonal. So there we go. So that's I3. But similarly, IN is any N by N matrix. That is the identity matrix. So with zeros everywhere except the main diagonal, which has ones. So that's the identity matrix. And that's also going to play a big role in matrices. All right. Next one. What we can do with the matrix is we can transpose it. Now, what does that mean? So if I've got a matrix A, and I'll show you with an example, you can read the explanation. If A is the matrix 1, 2, 3, 4, then A transpose is the matrix I get if I transpose the rows or interchange the rows with the columns. So the first row becomes the first column. Second row becomes the second column. So these are both two by two matrices where the one is the other one's transpose. The rows becomes the column, but it doesn't have to be square. I can say let matrix B be the matrix 1, 3, minus 1, 2, 4, 5. That is a 2 by 3 matrix. Then the transpose is going to be a 3 by 2 matrix. 1, 3, minus 1, 2, 4, 5. So that's a transpose matrix. Now, A is not equal to A transpose. And B is not equal to B transpose. So as a rule, they're not equal. But can you think of an example where the matrix and its transpose would be equal? Think of the identity I2, 1, 0, 0, 1. If I transpose that, and we use a capital letter for transpose, that'll again be 1, 0, 0, 1. So that matrix is equal to its, diag uh, its transpose. Take a look at most diagonal or all diagonal matrices and see if you can have the same property for diagonal matrices as we've got here for the identity. All right, now, some other cut types of matrices, and they're quite well named, so it's not complicated. The first one is the zero matrix. Zero, now, we often use a bold zero, but now when we write, we can't really write a bold. So to indicate it's a matrix, we sometimes say two by three, 
So I put the zero and two by three. So that tells you this is now a matrix, but it's a special matrix. It's a zero matrix. And what does the zero matrix have? Zeros everywhere. So it's a two by three matrix. Why well, zero, 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 zero. So it's a two by three matrix, just full of zeros. A row matrix is a matrix that has only one row. One, four, five. This is a one by three row matrix. For a row matrix, it doesn't matter how many columns it has, but it only has one row. And same for a column matrix. Minus 1, 2, 7, 10. That's a column matrix. It's got one column. It doesn't matter how many rows it has, but a column matrix only has one column. All right. We're nearly there going through these property or these types of matrices. Next one is a symmetric matrix. Now, symmetric matrix is symmetrical. It first has to be a square matrix, but it's symmetrical. Let's do a three by three matrix. If I'm going to put the diagonal here, doesn't matter what's on the diagonal, but A21 and A12 have to be the same. So if that's a minus five, this has to be a minus five. If this one is a four, A13, then A31 has to be a four. And similarly for this one, A23 and A32 must be the same. So if that's a seven, that has to be a seven. So symmetric matrix is symmetrical around the diagonal, meaning a mirror image, and that's a symmetric matrix. So the last type of matrix we're going to look at is a triangular matrix. A triangular matrix is a matrix that has zeros, and you can read the formal definition, but it's got zeros on one of the triangles. Yet again, we don't mind, doesn't matter what's on the diagonal, but one of the remaining triangles has got zeros. And we've got an upper triangular matrix and a lower triangular matrix. So a matrix is triangular if I've got zeros on one of the triangles. If it's zeros on both triangles, it's also a triangular matrix. And you can measure that against the definition. So we're going to look at triangular matrices again. They're going to come back. So in the next video, we're going to look at some operations on matrices and what we can do with matrices.